All right, hi everybody. I uh, want to welcome you to another MRI video. Today we're going to be talking about uh, how the computer in MRI, how the physics behind how we get a picture. And uh, to help us out, I bought these lovely little uh, devices here. They're pretty cool. Um, each little circle has a piece of iron in it. And I have several. You know, so you can do individual slices. So you're energizing one slice at a time. And when you're energizing each slice, you get an image from that. So pretty cool. So let's go over and take a look at the individual um, interactions. This is a device that I bought to help us look at um, MRI matrix and how everything works within the body when we put the patient in. It's a cool little, cool little panel here with uh, steel rods within individual containers. And we have rows and columns. And we will look at how this works. So first of all, we notice that all the um, iron bars here, the steel bars, are in a different orientation. Some are pointing up, some left, right, the, any obliquity um, within the, the system, right? That's why we are not magnetic when we're walking around because all these, um, are at, we don't have a positive or negative charge because all these spins or poles are looking in or spinning in a different direction. So everything cancels each other out. Okay, here's a closer look at it. You can see everything is pretty much random. So what happens when we introduce the patient into the magnetic field? We have our strong B sub-zero. So all these individual spins are going to line up. Now, of course, in a magnetic environment like MRI, all this will happen at the same time. But I don't have a one Tesla magnet here, so it's going to be a little bit slower for me. All right, so basically everything is now lined up here. Parallel or anti-parallel. So what we have to do now is give energy to these um, individual hydrogen protons and we will get an image from them. So they are aligned parallel or anti-parallel with B sub zero. We will give them an RF energy. Now I'm going to simulate RF energy with this magnet. Of course it's RF energy, radio frequency energy, that we are using to give them the, flip them into the transverse plane. Okay, so now everything is transversely located. And they will precess back to the parallel or anti-parallel. We only did that we get one data point for the whole image. We can't separate everything out. We need to add gradients. So we have a slice select gradient. So that is mimicking that we are taking images from this one discrete slice. Okay, so we have the we turn on a slice gradient and that energizes this one slice of tissue. Then we need to introduce gradients in phase and frequency. Okay, when we do that, we have isocenter, and in a, a linear gradient that we use in MR, the isocenter remains un, unchanged. It is the same as B sub zero, whatever that is, whether it be one Tesla, one and a half, three Tesla, etc. Okay, but the sides of the gradient will have a positive and a negative. So the positive section will speed up the phase or frequency of the 
atoms that are in that local area and the negative one will slow the phase and frequency down okay so if we move this across the center is still pretty much where it was but the other ones have changed position in response to this fast or slow um, gradient that has been placed on it. Now because each discrete area has a different phase and frequency, the computer can now tell exactly where that came from by separating for using the fast Fourier transform you can um, now de delineate that a phase and frequency of this particular area came from right here and this will be a little faster uh, etc so you can tell exactly where everything came from and separate it out into a usable image okay hopefully you have been able to see how the uh, matrix is um, is made in the MRI and how each individual pixel or voxel has its own individual phase and frequency by turning on our gradients at the right time Okay, so I'll uh, see you next time and have a great day.